Hello crafty friends, um, a warm welcome to um, my regular viewers and subscribers and um, a special welcome to um, anyone who is visiting my channel for the first time today. Um, my name's Terry um, and today uh, I'm doing a slightly different video um, than usual uh, in that I am part of an autoimmune disorder awareness YouTube hop. Um, and it's also happening over on Instagram. Now, autoimmune disorders are um, essentially disorders where the immune system has gone a bit wonky and um, this can have a, a range of different negative effects on the body and therefore on the person. Um, and um, this hop um, has been organised in order to raise awareness of autoimmune disorders. So below in the description box will be listed the next person in this hop. Um, so once you finish watching this video, um, have a look in the description, click on the link and it'll take you to the next person. Um, if you have just stumbled across my block, my hop video, um, if you click on the hashtag, that will actually show you all of the videos. So you'll be able to go back and see um, any of any other videos that you may have missed. Um, unless, of course, I am the last person in the hop, in which case there won't be a next person in the hop for you to see. Um, so... The reason I wanted to take part in this up um, is because autoimmune disorders are something that is really close to my heart. Um, I, ha I have a diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis or AS. Not many people have heard of it, uh, even though it's as common as Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis combined. Um, so ankylosing spondylitis um, causes um, pain, stiffness, fatigue uh, in different parts of the body, but um, in all cases um, in the lower part of the back where uh, I've been diagnosed with this now for 14 years and over the last few years it's got a lot worse um, and I've had to take stronger medication for it um, but luckily I've come out the other side and uh, I'm dealing with my condition really well. Um, so that's a bit about me and a bit about the hop and the next part is all about the actual card, the project that I'm going to make. So um, there are different colours that are associated with the different immune disorders, uh, autoimmune disorders, um, and uh, I'm not sure of the technical one that is associated with AS um, exactly. However, um, there's an amazing charity in the UK called NAS, N A S S, -S um, and their colour is orange, and everything they're branding it's all orange. So I have chosen to go with the colour orange. Um, I've chosen to use this lovely stamp uh, from Leonie Pugil, which is this gorgeous tree. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some of this uh, Craft Perfect uh, watercolor card. I'm going to stamp that onto this card, uh, heat emboss it using Detail Gold embossing powder. Um, and then I'm gonna color it in um, using my distress inks, using a range of orange coloured distress inks um, and also some of my um, new Gansai Tambi starry colours uh, because I really like this sentiment, bend through the storm and remember clear skies are on the other side of the rain cloud. I think that's um, a really good sentiment. Um, I'm going to prepare my desk and be back in a mo. So uh, I've got out my stamping platform and I'm going to, um, as I said, stamp and heat emboss this image. For those of you who haven't done any heat embossing before, um, it's really important to use um, an embossing um, powder bag or powder tool. Uh, there's different types you can get. And this basically stops the embossing powder from sticking to any areas that you don't want it to. I'm going to use this Versamark um, ink pad, which um, is a clear sticky ink, which is perfect for um, using in embossing techniques. So I'll give it a good old press down all over to try and get good coverage. And you can't see anything on there, but there should be uh, a lovely image of a tree on there now. The first step is to thoroughly cover 
the area that we stamped which can be a bit tricky when you can, when you can't see it but you just have to kind of remember where you uh, where you put it and then you do that and tap it off and then if there's any areas that it hasn't gone on that well you can go over it again there we go I think that's pretty good coverage now a good tip to avoid burning your fingers with the heat tool is to use a pair of self-gripping tweezers. You can see the colour begin to change now. I love it when that happens. I love that about heat embossing. And there we go. That is the uh, the tree that has been heat embossed um, with the lovely gold shimmer, which I just think looks gorgeous. So I've put some of my Distress Ink colours onto my Tim Holtz glass mat. Um, some of you might not realise that you can actually use Distress Inks uh, and dye inks um, as watercolours which is really quite handy. So I've got this uh, watercolour brush here that fill the barrel up with water and then you can um, paint with them. So I'm gonna start painting and I'm just gonna use a variety of different colours and, and mix it up a bit um, so I get some interesting shades. The good thing about the heat embossing is that it, it sort of stops the colour bleeding into the other area if you're careful. You know, I'm not a, a watercolour artist or anything like that by any means. Um, but this is something that, you know, you can quite comfortably just have a play with um, and get really nice results from without, um, you know, having to worry about having any particular skill. And then if at any time you want to sort of make it lighter, you can just sort of do that. Um, which again, I've, I've got a lighter colour there, so I'll use that here. Much more of a yellowy orange. But if I wanted to make it darker, I could add a bit more of this uh, spice marmalade. Make it more orangey. Now I'm just taking my time and going round and just adding bits of colour where I feel, you know, sort of spacing them equally at, uh, about and then um, I'll go in and add, add different colours as I go along. So I definitely think crafting helps me to manage my condition because one of the things about having a long-term condition is about management of it, um, you know, because if you've got a, a lifelong condition, it's it's not going to go away. Um, and so it's, for me anyway, it was about sort of wrapping my head around that. And I think it took me, I mean, I was diagnosed when I was 24. Um, and it, I wasn't really affected that badly at the time. Um, but then as I got older, um, well, it's only been the last sort of three or four years really that it started to affect me more. Um, and sort of having to deal with that. I might go in and add some, some gold over the top of these um, to make them sparkle. I'm definitely going to plan on using the splattering technique where you tap on your paintbrush and uh, make a lovely splattered background because I think that just looks gorgeous. So I'm definitely going to do that. I've also pulled out some brownish um, tones, ink pads to use for the trunk. I'm also going to add some gold to that so it's nice and sparkly as well because you know who doesn't love a bit of sparkle so I'm not sure exactly how many people uh, there are in the hop today but obviously we're all posting uh, quite short videos um, so hopefully you'll uh, follow along and get to see everyone else's uh, videos along the hop um, and learn more about other types of um, autoimmune disorders. One thing I would say to people is um, one of the, the symptoms of AS is um, lower back pain that lasts for more than three months. 
and uh, gets worse with rest and improves with exercise. So if anyone out there is experiencing that symptoms like that, so you know you're finding that you're waking up in the night and your back's really stiff, or if you've been sat around for a long period and you're feeling really stiff, and it's it's pretty much constant. Uh, you know that's um, that's a, a warning sign. So um, it, these sorts of things shouldn't be ignored. Um, and you know any any symptoms you know that are, are sort of unusual for us, um, we should go and get checked out. So I'm going to clear off my desk and add the brown tones to uh, my glass mat now. Right, so I'm back. Um, I decided to add some of the, the um, splatters uh, onto the card uh, before I cleaned off um, the oranges from my mat. Uh, I've now added um, pumice stone, pumice stone, tea dye, rusty hinge and aged mahogany. Uh, into the mix. So I think I'm going to start off with tea dye. Which is sort of a quite a, a sort of lighter colour and do the lighter areas and then um, go in and add some shadows. I don't do much um, sort of watercolouring actually but um, I just felt like it for, for this project. I just thought it would be, um, be nice. And I must admit, I'm I'm pleased with the way it's uh, it's going. I think I'm nearly there, guys. And what I'm going to do after this um, is I'm going to stamp that sentiment, and I think I'm going to heat emboss it in the same gold. So off camera, I went ahead and did what I said I was going to do, and heat embossed that lovely sentiment. Bend through the storm, and remember, clear skies are on the other side of the rain cloud. I've backed that onto a uh, scrap of uh, tonic um, speciality craft perfect card, um, which I think is called gold linen. So now I'm um, I've coloured the um, all the the sort of berry leaf type things, and I've coloured the tree. So I'm just going to go in and add some uh, golden tones. I think I'm quite happy with that. Most of the uh, blobs, <laughs> tree elements have got bits of colour on them, uh, I mean bits of shimmer on them. Um, the tree has also, um, so I think that looks really nice. So I'm going to now do the splatter technique. Right, so um, I am going to let that dry clean up the mess that I've made, stick on the sentiment and be back in a moment with a finished card. See you in a minute. And here we go my friends, um, here is the finished card. Uh, it's A6 in size. Um, I'll hold it up and give you all different angles so you can see. I am made um, a back, my own backing panel to ensure that it matched the card with a uh, carved pumpkin. So I just swiped the ink pad all around the edge of the card. I am really pleased with it. It's got a gorgeous sentiment and positive message on there. And I think that would be lovely to give to someone who is going through a difficult time or just to just to give them a bit of encouragement. So um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And in the description box below, as mentioned, you will find the link uh, to the next person in the hop. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed um, and now have more uh, awareness of one of the autoimmune disorders. If you carry on uh, through the hop, uh, which I really hope you do, um, then you'll learn more and more about other auto autoimmune disorders um, and find some new crafters um, to, uh, that, you, that you might enjoy their work. So um, I'll leave you with that. Um, if you like the video, use your thumbs and give me a thumbs up and um, please consider subscribing. Uh, many thanks. Bye.